concentrations across the membrane, and then contrast that to what happens when you inject charges across the membrane. See what the similarities and the differences are, and see if we can figure that out. So, what do you want to do first? Well, we should probably start with a membrane. Good idea. Let's start with a membrane. And let's use potassium. Sounds like a good idea. Potassium nice. ion is a good one to start with. Okay, so let's start with potassium inside the membrane and potassium outside the membrane. Okay. And we'll say that the potassium inside the membrane is something high. Mm -hmm. So like 400. Millimolar. Millimolar. And the potassium outside the membrane can be something sort of low. Mm -hmm. So, what should we start with? The nurse potential? I think so. Okay. So let's start with our nurse equation. So 58 millivolts times the log of K out. In. Mm -hmm. For us, that's 58 millivolts times log of 20 over 400, right. which is 1 20th. Right. And when we calculate that, it's about negative 75. What? Millivolts. Millivolts, okay. Can't forget your units. Can't forget units. Okay, and so what does it look like across the membrane? Okay, so if here's our membrane, we have 400 millimolars. Millimolars. I said it right and wrote it wrong. Because uh, millivolts wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of potassium. And this is inside or out? Inside. Yeah. Good. And then 20 millimolars mm -hmm. <laughs> of potassium outside. What does it look like across the membrane? Well, let's see. So the concentration gradient is pushing this way. Right, because it's higher inside, so there's more chances of potassium ions bumping into the membrane and leaking out. Mm -hmm. And as these ions sort of flow through, mm -hmm. they build up our electrical gradient. Right, they leave behind negative charges and create excess positive charges on the outside. And that creates our equal and opposite flux of electricity. Excellent. And those two are, therefore, since they're equal and opposite... They're in equilibrium. That's in equilibrium. So mm -hmm. this will be maintained... Indefinitely, really, sort Yes, of. exactly. If the or gradients less. don't break down, they'll be maintained indefinitely. So in order to think about what happens when we change concentration, let's start with a relatively simple problem, which we could do in our heads, where we make the outside concentration equal to the inside. We're increasing the potassium concentration, but we increase it to an easy number, which is the same as what's inside. Good. So what happens... Well, should we think in terms of the fluxes first? Sure. What happened to the concentration flux because the concentration is equal inside and out? Well, the concentration flux wouldn't be there anymore. That's right. I mean, there would be some leaking in and some leaking out, but it's an equal probability. Mm -hmm. Now we have, initially for a short time, an elect unbalanced electrical flux. What happens to it? It would probably pull some ions in positive charges in, mm -hmm. and what would that do to the charges across the membrane? It would neutralize them. That's right. So it would start, the positives come in, and they start basically, step by step, knocking out those negative charges mm -hmm. on the inside. And as you knock out the negative charges, what happens to the positive on the outside? It knocks out the positive charges. And then what happens to the electrical gradient after you wait just a little while? It's probably also gone. Ta-da! Are we in equilibrium? Yes. Yes, so we're still in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And now, what's happened to the polarization across the membrane? Well, we've lost our buildup of ions on it, so it's been depolarized. It's been depolarized. So mm -hmm. increasing the potassium out yields depolarization. So what about the nurse potential? Ah, let's, actually, that's why I said we could do this in our heads. What's the ratio outside to in? 
is 400 over 400, Which so is, it's 1. And what's the log of 1? Is 0. And so 58 millivolts times 0 is? 0. Which means that the next potential is? 0. Ah, that wasn't so hard. Nope, not at all. So that tells us that as we increase the potassium in general, I mean, we did it for one number, but we can mm -hmm. see what will happen is that fraction will get closer and closer to 1 as the value outside gets larger and larger, right? Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is you'll get closer and closer to 0. And in fact, if you made it large enough, you could reverse it, and now it would be positive. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Good. Now let's go the other way. So now we should reduce the potassium out, right? Yes, let's do that. How much? No, take it down to, what, 10? 10? 10 works. Okay. So. so what happens to our inert potential? Well, now we have a big concentration gradient. Yes. And... What does that mean in terms of the electrical gradient to um, balance it? we'd end up having a big electrical gradient with a lot of charges. Ah, so that actually makes sense too. Now, again we change concentration. I'll let you finish draw, drawing those wonderful positive charges. It takes so long to draw. I know, <laughs> but we want to be right. And of course, if you're actually doing it, it would take a lot longer to draw because mm -hmm. this is a tiny number compared to the real number. Okay, um, are we in equilibrium? Yes. Yes. So we change concentration and we end up with a different potential across the membrane, but we stay in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Okay, What's, what value are we at? Well, we have to calculate it again. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So we start with 50 millivolts times log of out over in, which, which is in this case would be 10 over 400, which is then becomes... Let's calculate this. It should be about negative 93. That's right. Good. Okay. So minus 93. So now on down here, you indicate that you decrease the potassium outside. And what do you get? That's a hyperpolarization. That's right. There's more polarization across the membrane. That's a hyperpolarization. But you never left equilibrium. And how long does this last? This one's also indefinitely, right? Exactly. As long as you're in equilibrium, you're there. Okay, so we've done concentration changes up and down, and mm -hmm. we've got depolarization and hyperpolarization. Mm -hmm. So now let's contrast this with what happens if we inject current across the membrane. Let's put us ourselves back where we were, back at 20 on the inside, uh, sorry, 400 on the inside, 20 on the outside, back to the same slightly smaller fluxes due to the concentration and the electrical gradients, mm -hmm. and the smaller charge separation back to minus 75 millivolts, in other words. Mm -hmm. Good. And we can erase that second line over there so we don't confuse ourselves with it. Okay, so now we'll be injecting charge, right? That's right. So how do you inject charge? Uh, takes an electrode. Right. So uh, what you can do is you can actually stick an electrode and well, if it's sharp enough, it can actually penetrate the membrane and go right through the membrane inside. And now let's imagine you're injecting positive charges what happens to those charges? What do they do to the charges on the inside of the membrane? Well, they probably neutralize them, That's right? right. And so if you reduce the polarization across the membrane, you will... Depolarize the cell. All right. So let's draw the current pulse, the positive current pulse. Okay. So I'm going to draw... Here's our, our current. It's in... Amps. Right. Amperes, usually in nanoamperes. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll just make it a very small axis in amps. Okay. And here's time. Right. So let's see. We start at a current That's of right. zero, right. and then we'll inject sort of some current. Some small current, probably a nanoamp would mm -hmm. be about right. And, and then, then we'll we turn it off. Turn it off. Okay. So that's, now we have to analyze what happens to what? What are we going to be plotting above this? Um, the voltage, the yeah. membrane potential. The membrane potential. So let's write that down. Okay. I'll just write potential. Okay. And that's in? And that's in millivolts. Correct. So we usually use the symbol? V. Right. Okay. Right. So? Then we start with time zero. And what happens? Well, let's look at the fluxes. Good idea. Out. 
Good idea. So we start by injecting these positive charges. What does that do to the... Okay, we talked about neutralizing some of the negative charges. What does that do to the electrical flux? It should make it smaller. Correct, it does. Because now part of the electrical flux is taken care of by the... By the injected. By the injected current flux. So there's our electrical flux. And I'll draw... The current is doing that for now. Where do the charges go? Um, well, first they land on the membrane, right? Because right. that's huge. That's right. And does the membrane... So what happens is you start changing the charge separation across the membrane. What happens to the voltage across the membrane? Bigger, smaller? Um, well, in this case, with the positive charges, it should make the membrane potential more positive. All right, let's draw draw that. Okay, and but this takes time, right? Yeah, because you're landing on a capacitor, uh -huh. and you're charging up a capacitor, so it, it, sl it rises slowly. And then as the capacitor does charge, it stops changing, and now you're only running through the ion channels. Uh -huh. That's the resistive current. And this kind of right. lines up with... And that lines up with the up to the end of that current pulse. Yep. And now you turn off the current pulse, so that part of the thing goes away, and now what do you have? Now we have a larger concentration. That's right, right. the concentration flux is mm -hmm. larger than the current flux, and what does that do? That would pull some ions back into the cell, That's so first we have to turn that off. Actually, it'll, it'll allow more of these positive charges from the inside to move out, because oh, the concentration yeah. gradient is larger. Right, that starts pulling the positive charge out, and what does that do to the charges across the membrane? It leaves negative charges inside. That's right. And now that that's starting to give more charge separation across the membrane, what happens to the electrical flux? It becomes bigger again. All right. And what does this look like in terms of the change in potential? Well, this this takes a little bit of time again, right? Again, because you're the... discharging the capacitor. And so it takes sort of a... A little bit of a... That's right. And then it comes back down. down. And then you're back to the same voltage you had when you started. Now, how long does this take in time? You wrote down time. What are the units? These are in milliseconds, okay. right? Okay. So we were talking about first about something that could last for a very long time, hours, or even longer, as long as the concentration didn't change. Those were equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Here, you transiently change current levels. You still are acting on the underlying fluxes, which is why you need to understand them in both cases. Yeah. But now it happens very quickly. Okay, so it's completely different time scales, but it's the same sort of... Underlying principles, which is why knowing about the fluxes and the charge separation, all this stuff is useful in both cases. Yep. Good. Okay.